My initial review of the dragonflies after updating to MQA rendering reported that the dragonflies could fully decode MQA. I was wrong. As the Roman author Seneca said, errare humanum est perseverare diabolicum. Errors are human, persisting is diabolical. A new review will be online soon, but what went wrong? As with all things that go wrong, it was not a single error that caused the incorrect reporting of MQA decoding by the dragonflies. First, I was pressed for time. I know, that's no excuse, but if I don't bring out a video on Friday, my viewers are equally disappointed. Second, I couldn't find documentation on the MQA update. There's a FAQ now, but there wasn't then. So I couldn't find what color would indicate MQA rendering. Now I know it's purple, which is a deeper shade of magenta that the dragonflies use for 96 kHz. Add to that the fact that my site has a lower sensitivity for red and green. That is especially a problem with red since green is about 60% of the light energy we see while blue and red are both around 20%. This makes it hard for me to distinguish any combination of red and blue, which is this area in the CIE chart, exactly where 96 kHz and MQA decoding colors are. Now, don't get me wrong, if I had doubted the outcome, I would have asked my wife to check the colors or I would have made a photo and used a vector scope to check the color. But during the testing, I had a phone conversation with Bob Stewart and Spencer Chrislew of MQA and I had asked Bob if the dragonflies would do full decoding. I'm still not sure what meant wrong, but I have misinterpreted what Bob said and believed the dragonflies would indeed decode and render MQA completely. When I then compared non-MQA files to MQA files, the latter sounded better. Some even clearly better. I had no doubt to question Bob. I had no clue I should have questioned myself and I did hear differences between non-MQA and MQA files. Case closed. No need to check colors, I trusted my ears for they seldom let me down. The problem with judging MQA is that even the non-decoded MQA file differs from the normal PCM version since some deblurring already took place. When a music file is MQA encoded, the encoder analyzes the signal using artificial intelligence and then produces three signals. The result when not MQA decoded, the result when only the first stage is decoded and the signal after complete rendering. These can be judged and tweaked by the engineer before the file is finally produced and locked. Ideally, these three sounds are as close together as possible but it might be clear that the quality of the fully rendered MQA signal will be better than that of the non-decoded signal, while the decoded signal will be in between. But when comparing the non-decoded MQA signal to the original signal it stems from, chances are the non-decoded MQA signal is better due to the primary deblurring that took place during encoding. That might not always lead to a clear improvement. You might sometimes find fully rendered MQA files to sound equal or even less than the original. Whether the artificial inter intelligence part of the encoder was wrong there and the engineer was slipping, or you might like the original better than the deblurred version, that's hard to say. Does that mean that MQA is unreliable, prone to errors and thus should be banned? Not at all. We had jitter in the 80s that really killed the music. This is now under control when you buy the right gear. Unfortunately everyone can claim now jitter figures that are fantastic, but if you stick with reputable manufacturers jitter shouldn't be a problem anymore. Still there always was this strange mid-range behavior that I have been describing in various ways over the last 10 years. The fantastic WTA filters that Court uses did improve this clearly, but it is the connoisseur solution. 
when MQA was announced, it was immediately clear to me that this could be the solution. It's affordable in production, it's easy on streaming services, and it prevents tampering with the files. So perhaps you might add another factor to the list that caused my error. I wanted, and still want, the system to be successful. MQA is not just another technology. It is based on not only electronics, but also on psychoacoustics and neurological knowledge and therefore is very hard to understand. We reviewers, or at least I, have to learn to judge this new carrier. I must be willing to reject MQA when appropriate. I must be also willing to defend the system for as long as I think it's the right solution. And we should be willing to discuss this openly and freely and by all means in a decent way. I tr try to do my work as good as possible, so I am a hard man to convince. Still, I invite you to keep pointing me to my errors. It's the truth I seek. Soon the revised Dragonfly MQA update review will be online and when it is I will link to it from here. So stay in contact by subscribing to this channel or to my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the link. If you have a question, post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do, the link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>